Guy Martin is the editor, editor at Defence Web. Guy, good afternoon to you. As I understand it, this is sort of jungle terrain in the eastern DRC. How difficult is it going to be to fight under those conditions? Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. Uh, the DRC has always been a bit of a challenging environment. Um, the thick, thick jungle does pose a, an issue. The rebels are quite adept at uh, bending into the jungle and uh, in getting enough intelligence um, on their whereabouts is often proven to be quite challenging. So it's not going to be an easy mission, um, especially when the SAMI DRC forces um, don't have enough um, assets behind them. Um, for instance, there's a, a bit of a lack of air power, there's a lack of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. And I think that's going to um, uh, make their job a lot harder than it, it could be. One of the big issues, as I understand it, is around air support, and I suppose particularly helicopters. What kind of air support do you need there? Ideally, you'd need uh, at the minimum attack helicopters. Um, I, in an ideal world, you would have uh, jets able to launch precision guided munitions, rockets, bombs, and so forth, um, as well as surveillance drones to keep an eye on, on rebel forces and gather intelligence. So at the very minimum, I would say we need attack helicopters, whether that's, say, MI-24s from um, other troop contributing countries or it's Royal Fox from the South African Air Force. I mean, as we've seen um, during this the attack on the Oryx uh, earlier this month, that attack probably wouldn't have happened if the Oryx had been backed up by at least one Royal Falk. So uh, several years ago when the South African Air Force had a Royal Falks available, it was common procedure for Oryx to be escorted by Royal Falks, and that had a significant deterrent effect. And you might recall in 2013, uh, when the Royal Falk was first deployed to the DRC, um, within about a week, the Royal Falk proved so effective at um, combating the M23 rebels that they pushed for a ceasefire. Now, without that um, air support, the SAMI DRC forces are going to face a very, very difficult time. I mean, at the moment, they've just uh, got vehicles, um, land vehicles, and very little in the way of, of air support. Um, there are transport helicopters, but as we've seen, those have proven to be vulnerable. And it's also quite disturbing that there are now reports that the M23 forces have access to surface-to-air missiles. So our Oryx helicopters are fitted with countermeasures systems, but for the first time, they will be facing surface-to-air missiles, and that greatly increases the risks to our pilots up there. Would it be possible by December to fix the Royal Falks that we had or get other helicopters from somewhere else? It would be possible if the funding was made available, but the way the defence budget is going, that's highly unlikely. Um, and the chances of um, getting assets from other troop contributing countries is pretty unlikely. So SAMI DRC at the moment is made up of South Africa, Tanzania and Malawi. And Tanzania and Malawi don't have much in the way of, of attack helicopters. So unfortunately, unless other countries come to the party, it doesn't look like the situation will get better anytime soon. As I understand it, we're sending soldiers into this area in this mission, and there are South African soldiers as part of the United Nations mission which is leaving this area. Could there be quite a strange situation where there are two different groups of South African soldiers in the same area operating against the same enemies at the same time? Uh, it's, it's unlikely. Um, I think there will be close coordination. Um, the UN mission is drawing down, so there will be less chance of, of uh, San DRC and Monusco forces operating together. But there's a lot that we still don't know about how this uh, San DRC mission is going to be structured, um, what sort of operations they're going to carry out, how they're going to work with uh, Monusco, uh, what the timeline, the exact timeline is for the Monusco withdrawal. Uh, we've been told that by the end of the year, all the United Nations forces will be withdrawn from the DRC. Um, but to me, what is interesting is that uh, there are about 15,000 UN forces in the DRC, and they have not been able to bring rebel groups under control. 
uh, it will be about 5,000 Sami DRC for, uh, forces in the country. And it's unlikely that that much smaller force will be more effective than the UN force that's been there for decades now. Guy Martin, thank you. Editor of Defence, we really do appreciate the time.